You make my life so beautiful. He's the general overseer of Turning Point Ministries International with headquarters in Accra, Ghana. A man called and specially anointed to set the captives free. An apostle of deliverance. An outstanding teacher and preacher in spiritual warfare spanning over 10 years in the deliverance ministry. With undeniable testimonies, signs and wonders. A man whose ministry has seen him widely traveled and ministers in radio stations in Ghana and on the internet. He is the author of the bestseller, Overcoming the Giant in the House. As marriage counselor, his practical teaching on marriage has transformed many homes. And now, in the power and might of the Holy Ghost, let us receive Reverend Chris Galba. That's why I love you forever. life life offers wages that's what the bible said the wages of sin is death and until you break your cage you're not going anywhere my sister my brother i'm telling you but i see somebody breaking his cage tonight you will break your cage somebody saw they said tonight i will break my cage Luke 10 verse 30. Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we, are, we are all sojourning from one place to another. Do you know what Jerusalem represents? Jerusalem represents your source, your beginning, your foundation. Everybody is making an attempt to progress in life. Likewise this man. He was journeying from Jerusalem to Jericho. And the Bible said he fell among thieves. The Bible said the devil comes to do what? To kill, to steal, and to destroy. There are many of you seated here, and some of you watch me online. You have fallen among thieves, for which reason you have never been able to rise up again. And when this attack you, they are after one thing, your identity. Because when he fell among thieves, the first thing they did was to strip him of his identity. They stripped him of his clothing and wounded him. Departing, leaving him half dead. Why do you think that when a priest came around, the priest looked at him. He looked like an, an armed robber who was, who was staging and faking. That's why the priest didn't bother himself and left. And so there are some of you, Satan has packaged you, your helpers who are supposed to help you. Your identity has been changed in the spirit. Have you not seen people? They look like they are blessed, but they are poor. And people look at them, they assume they are blessed. So because of that, they don't bless them. You've not seen people like that. They are stature, everything about them, but they are broke. When you look at them and say, Oh, my sister, oh, sister, sister look at me, I dress in the way she, oh, she's okay. <laughs> now, by chance, a priest came, but because the identity has been changed. Today I prophesy anybody who has changed your identity by the time we start praying tonight your identity will be restored. I say your identity will be restored. Somebody said that my identity is being restored tonight in the name of Jesus. You see Jerusalem represents your source, your beginning. Your source, your beginning. Now let me end on this. Go to Mark 11, 1 to 9. Tomorrow we'll continue. Let me end on this. Mark 11. Can I get some rope? I want to show you something. Rope. Can I get a long rope? Somebody help me with a long rope. I want to show you something. 
I want to show you something. Mark 11 verse 1. Now when they drew near Jerusalem to Bethphage and Bethany. Remember I told you that Jerusalem represents your source, your beginning. You see, all of you look at me, let me, let me tell you something. One thing about foundations and your source and beginning is that it doesn't matter which country you travel to, which organization you work with. If you don't deal with your foundation, it is only a matter of time it will speak. I'm asking somebody, if you don't work on your foundation, it is only a matter of time. Because 90% of the challenges we go through has to do with our background. Because you see, whether you like it or not, you didn't came, you didn't come from the moon. How many of you came from the moon so that we can celebrate you as an alien? All of us sitting here come from a family background. That's why you bear a family name. So don't think that what happened to your auntie as for me to not happen to me. What happened to my mother it to not happen to me. You lie. If you don't deal with it, history has a way of repeating itself on a higher plane. I've been to see some families like that. The, the grandfather is polygamous. Married five wives. The father was not polygamous. But the father married the first one. It didn't work. Married the second one. It didn't work. Married the third one. But never divorced in a court. So it looked like it's not polygamous. You the child. You've also married the first one. It's not working. You've divorced. You want to marry again. Most of the time, people don't look at it at that angle. So, you, you need to understand that nobody came from the moon. Every one of us come from a family background. And the Bible said, they had drawn near to Jerusalem, to Bethany and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives. And he sent two of his disciples. Do you know why he sent two of his disciples? Isaiah had prophesied. Let me give you this, the scripture. Let me give you the scripture. Go to Zechariah. Zechariah 9 9. Zechariah had prophesied. After Zechariah 9 9, come back to this scripture again. Zechariah 9 9. Do you have the rope now? Any nice rope? Any, any rope? Don't worry. I want to show you something. Go to Zechariah 9 9. Now, tie, tie it on my waist for me. I want to show them something. Tie it on my waist. How are you? Tie it on my waist. Let me show you something. I want to show you something. Good. Now, tie it on the speaker or something. Yeah. Now, Jesus, what something? Jesus, according to Zechariah 9 9, can you go there for us? Jesus, it had been prophesied that the king, which was Jesus, was going to sit on a donkey. Somebody say, donkey. When Jesus got there, ladies and gentlemen, there was no donkey. The prophecy was not fulfilled. And many of us, we have got into that junction of life where somebody is supposed to carry us to the next level. But when you go to that junction of life, the person is nowhere to be found. I might communicate to somebody. Let me tell you, in this life, you need somebody. In this life, 
See, those of you who pray and say, me, I don't need anybody. I just need God. <laughs> you are living a fool's paradise. It takes men to change men's destiny. Did you hear what I just said? Huh? It takes men to change the destiny of men. Some of you are here, you are looking for $10,000, $20,000, $100,000, $200,000, $1,000,000. ,000. I tell you, people have it in their pocket. It's chicken change. So, stop talking like that and say that, oh, for me, I don't need anybody, I just need God. Even Jesus was delayed. Because there was a prophecy concerning him in Zechariah 9.9. -9. He said, rejoice, rejoice, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey. And yet, Jesus got to that junction of life and the donkey was not there. Some of you, there are people that God has ordained before eternity that they must help you. But they are tied. Some of you, your wife is tied. Your husband is tied. That's why you are dating all the wrong men because the right person for you is tied somewhere. Jesus, you see, when you get to this juncture of life, you can become a spectator. That's when every outdoor in they will invite you. Every wedding they will invite you. You'll be bridesmaid. Flower girl. You become a spectator at the junction of life. You're watching others. Celebrating them. And, and you see, that is when we start confessing. And we start telling ourselves. Because you see, you, you have gone into that junction where you need to encourage yourself. Say, delay is not denial. Keep saying that. You started saying that since two, two, 2001. Now we are in what? 2023. 2023. Keep saying that. Because you see, faith without evidence is not real. So when you are making a confession, and that confession cannot be proven and backed, there's something wrong with that confession. And there are many people who have gone into the junction of life where they have become spectators because the person to carry them to the next level, we want to go, this ministry we do. If you don't meet the people who carry you to the next level, now I allow, hey, you'll be meeting all wrong people. They'll come and just be going. Go, come and go. they, they, they'll come and be going. It's my life, oh. I'm telling you my life. I'm not even talking about this ministry. Yeah. They will frustrate you, eh? Because in this life, you need somebody you see, we, I call them bedding bearers. They cry with you. Your problem is their problem. They are there to carry you to your destination. And yet, many of such people, they are tied. They are tied. They are tied. And so Jesus said, go to the village. Go back to that scripture. He said, go to the village. Go to, back to Jerusalem. Go to the source, the beginning, where it is coming from. The foundation. When you go, he said, go to the village opposite to you. As soon as you enter in. Now, now that is what strike me. He said, as soon as you enter. It means that the, the, Jesus was at the junction of life waiting for the donkey. The donkey too has been tied. It's at the junction of life trying to come out. And Jesus said, when you enter, you will find a coat tied. The question I want to ask you tonight, who has tied you? Huh? Who has tied you? Some of you, your husband has been tied. Oh. Your wife has been tied. The right person for you has been tied. That's why I started giving you the example of the pastor. This pastor I'm talking about, he has dated this girl for more than three, four years. So they were doing the ministry together. So everybody knew that, oh, his sister, so, 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 and so that he will marry. When he had that dream, he ran, oh, he ran. He said, this battle, I can't fight it. Who has tied you? Tied! He said, 
as soon as you enter in, you find a coat tied on which no one has ever sat. Can you imagine? A coat with potential, gifting. That's why I said there are some women, they are pretty. Oh. They are so pretty, mannered, cultured. They know how to talk. But no man is asking them, are you for sale, for hire, for rent? Only stupid men who come and propose to them, use them, dump them. There are some families, women of God, they are distributed of children. I met one in London. The grandmother came, has seven with seven men. The other one following, the mother, she also has five. So their family, what they do is distribute children to men. So you don't have one man with five kids. No. You have Kofi's father. Imbele's father. You have George's father. They distribute. They are pretty cultured. There's nothing about them that doesn't make them a good wife. Material. But yet, no man can stay with them. Tied. Has a potential graduate. Very intelligent. He goes for an interview. They say, oh, you are very qualified. The next minute, they start telling them, him story. Oh, you are overqualified for the job. You are overqualified for the job. <laughs> so we can't take you. I thought rather qualification should be, you are not qualified. But how, how do you say somebody is overqualified so he can't get a job? I thought rather overqualified should be a motivation to give him the job. Oh, you're overqualified for the job. We can't pay you. So you, with potential, with gifting, with talent, no man has ever, he said, lose him and bring him. Lose him and bring him. Tonight, in this three days program, the Lord has sent me from Ghana. See, tomorrow, Sunday, I'll be doing deliverance. You will see manifestations. Some of you, you will vomit things that you have never dreamt that you can vomit. I'm serious. Today, I just landed today. I just want to give you an introduction today. I didn't come here to play. Some of you, you dream somebody's chasing you. Somebody wants to kill you. You don't understand. You have been tied. Something is fighting you. You don't know why you work so hard, but nothing to show. You work like an elephant, yet you eat like an ant. There are some of you, you rob Peter to pay Paul. Before your salary has come, you have done computation already. I must pay, I must pay question. I must pay this person. So, by the time you pay those people, you are back to zero again. And for the past 10 years, you've been robbing Peter to pay Paul. There are some of you, you have been tired. You've tried everything to get your documentation. Even people that you help them to come to this country, they've gotten theirs. Yours is still hanging. This is not a coincidence with my sister. You have been tired. Something is fighting you. Something is fighting you. I, I met one woman. She, she struggled. If you see the woman, eh? if it is Nantu, she has it. This one, everything. Suffered with the husband for 20 years. One day, the husband filed a divorce. Guess the, the woman, the husband is going, some chingilingi. If you see the girl, eh, if they even dash her to you, you don't want. 20 years of labor, hard labor with the man. They built a house back home doing things. The man just divorced this woman. Sometimes it's not a man, oh, it is what is following you, my sister. It is what is following you. As I said, until you discover the mystery behind your misery. And you see, the problem about many men is that they don't have the confidence to tell you. Because I met one lady, for instance, she said she had dated 10 men. All of them vanished without telling her the reason. Until one of them, among the 10 men, one of them gathered courage and said, Sister, I want to tell you something. The day I took you for dinner, that night, you were chasing me with cutlass. I said, ha. Huh. That's why all the other nine, they ran away. Because men, they will, naturally, they will not tell you. They will, they will just run away and leave you. But this one, he gathered courage. He said, 
Sister, this is what I saw. You were chasing me to kill me. Oh. This one, I can't, I can't do this battle. He said, lose him and bring him. You see, deliverance is so important. You know why? The Bible said, upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. Don't let anybody deceive you, ladies and gentlemen. Deliverance is real. Deliverance. Because you see, many of you have heard sermons. And they tell you that if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature, all things are passed away. Behold, he has become a new person. Tell me what has become new about you. Since you became born again, all you know how to do is to speak in tongues. Shada, daba, shada, daba. When, we, but when we start talking money right now, some of them will switch into the spirit. They will switch into the spirit. Man is a body, soul, and spirit. And that is why deliverance is very relevant. Because you see, this body is the container. It will never become born again until Jesus comes, whether you like it or not. That is why the body will always be in contention with the spirit because the body wants something. The spirit will say no. The body, that is not the real you. The real you is not the body. The body is just a container. The spirit is the real you. In fact, even in other theological uh, school of thought, they will even tell you that the, the soul is the real you, but I am not of that school of thought. So I will tell you that the spirit is the real you. Now, the reason why a lot of people debate, and they say, oh, a child of God cannot be possessed. A child of God cannot be possessed. If, if you're truly a child of God, how can the devil possess you? Let me explain why they talk like that. When somebody is not born again, he doesn't have the spirit of God. That is why the Bible says that the, 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 a man who is not born again, is, his spirit is not saved. So that person is very wicked. He can do anything. He's a very dangerous person. But when you give your life to Christ and you submit yourself to Christ, your spirit, your spirit man becomes refined. And so when your spirit man becomes refined, what happens is that Satan cannot manipulate your spirit man. Satan cannot come there. He can't come close. But there's a place Satan can enter. It's called the soul realm. Do you know what is the soul? The soul is where you think. Your subconscious. Your reasoning faculty. Now, how do you nourish your soul? Through understanding, reading, researching, listening to the word of God, and growing in the things of God. Where does deliverance come in? Most of the deliverance issues we are talking about are in the soul realm. And so don't let anybody deceive you and tell you that all these pastors who talk about deliverance, they are just scaring you. Who told you? When you know your enemy, will you eat in his house? I want to ask you a question. You cannot confront what you don't know. You can only fight what you know. And the essence of deliverance is to open your eyes so that you can confront what is fighting you. Because you can't fight what you don't know. That is why people move from prayer meeting, prayer meeting, they are praying. Ask them, what are you praying about? They can't tell you. They don't even know what they are praying about. Because you can only confront what you are aware. And so, the Bible said, let Satan has an advantage over us. The, the only reason why a lot of people are being defeated day in day out is because they lack knowledge and the bible said for lack of knowledge my people they perish so don't let anybody deceive you and tell you that oh this thing they're just putting fear in you i'm telling you that deliverance is real i've always said that listen if you go to a church where all the, they talk about is new creation new creation without telling you about deliverance run if they talk about prosperity, 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 and they don't talk about other things, run. You go to a place, they talk about holiness, holiness, holiness. They don't talk about prosperity, they don't talk about deliverance, run. Because I always say that the gospel must be balanced. I have come from Accra. My duty for these three days is to help you enter your background. Because you see, tonight, for instance, 
I may not touch some of you. I may not pray for some of you. Nothing. But just sitting under my ministry, you have a dream. Some of you have a dream tonight. It's a gift God has given me. And you know why you have the dream? God will start showing you the mystery behind your misery. Why things are happening the way they're happening. Let me end on this. You know why some of you, you think you are so busy? Let me show you. You are tired, but you don't know. You see, when it comes to spiritual things, they are time sensitive. When I say time sensitive, do you understand? For instance, if your father or your mother go to university and finish university, and you are now coming up, you finish GSS. You finish S's. Is it not normal? Then you get to university. Then you realize that. My father also got to university. He couldn't go beyond it. Because the thing is time sensitive. So until you, you have beaten them or tried to beat them, you never really realize that something stopped them. Until, have you to see that everything is okay until you want to do what nobody has done before. <laughs> and that is when the battle will start. What your father hasn't done before, you want to do it. What your mother hasn't done, you want to try it. Then the battle will start. Because the thing is time sensitive, it's just watching you. But you know the mystery of life. Many of us, when we go uh, and the thing hold us, instead of discovering so that you can go beyond we don't so we go back because if you can't move forward what's the next step to take if you can't move forward what would be the next step to take oh church communicate with me if you are moving forward and you are stuck what would be the next logical steps is to go back then you make it move again and you go then you are stuck so you go you are stuck. You go. So, people around you, they see you as very busy. Oh, sister, you're, you're busy, pal. Busy for nothing. Yeah. Let me give you a practical example. Some of you think you have money, but you see, when you check your account, you realize that all the time, the account doesn't go beyond $10,000. So, you put $10,000 there. Then you chop uh, then another money, you can go and put the next $10,000. Then you're feeling good. But you've never sat down one day to say, ah, Mikra, have I ever had 100000 in my account before? But you see, because I'm, I'm teaching you some things. So, you see, so that 100000 is another version of your mother during his time when he was in Ghana. 10,000 Ghana. So, you are not actually gone beyond them. You are the same level. And until you discover, you are not going anywhere. And you see, parents, let me show you something. Let me tell you something. The reason why you must be serious about this three days meeting is that when you can't confront and you don't confront, whatever you are going through, your children will come and face it. And they will curse you. Because the battle we are fighting is not for us. It's for our children. Give the Lord a clap of friend. Let's be upstanding. Let's be upstanding. Are you blessed that you came? Did you learn something? Have I wasted your time? No. Oh, are you sure? You've learned something. So you are bringing somebody tomorrow. Raise your hand. Listen. Tonight we are dealing with delay. Tomorrow we'll deal with something else. Raise your hand. They're going to pray. Now, can you be on the keyboard for me? You are going to pray... That any spirit of delay that fought my mother, fought my father, tonight, let it be truncated. Am I asking somebody? Raise your hand. Say in the name of Jesus. Or oh, say like you mean, say in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of delay that delayed my mother delayed my father as I pray and I clap my hands let that delay be broken 
in my life in the name of Jesus in my marriage in my finances clap your hands and begin to pray open your mouth pray pray somebody pray clap your hands and pray every spirit of delay as we clap our hands begin to break in the name of Jesus begin to break begin to break clap your hands and pray spirit of delay begin to break begin to break by fire any delay now fought my mother any delay now fought my father tonight as I pray begin to break now break 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 in the name of Jesus The Bible said, seeing the days of John the Baptist and now, the kingdom of God suffered a violence, and the violence taken by force. Open your mouth and pray, pray. We break in the name of Jesus. Let the delay be over. Every spirit of delay be over. In the name of Jesus, don't stop praying. In Jesus' name. Shout, my father, my father. Whatever stopped my mother? whatever stopped my father in this conference as I clap my hands in the name of Jesus let that delay begin to break in my life whatever stopped my mother as I clap my hands minus me I declare that I am loose my children are loose my finances are loose my marriage is loose clap your hands and pray pray clap your hands and pray i am loose clap your hands don't stop praying let it be loose right now Be loose right now. Be loose right now. Every delay, be loose. Whatever stop my mother will not stop me. Whatever stop my father will not stop me. In the name of Jesus, minus me and my household. Clap your hands and pray. Clap your hands and pray. It will not stop me. It will not stop me. It will not stop me. Clap your hands and pray. It will not stop me.
it will not stop me in the name of Jesus it will not stop me as I open my mouth to pray whatever stop there will not stop me I break the struggle of delay Pray in our last prayer. Shout and say, I will arrive. And I will arrive on time. Any authority fighting my arrival as I clap my hands begin to scatter, begin to shatter and scatter in the name of Jesus begin to wither clap your hands and pray begin to wither begin to wither pray pray let them begin to wither right now as i clap my hands let them begin to wither let them begin to break Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Begin to wither now. Begin to wither now. In the name of Jesus. Begin to wither now. Begin to wither now. Begin to wither now. Holy Ghost. Thank you for making time with us on Wind of Deliverance. For more information, kindly contact 0544. 283164 or 054 or 024 and 024 You can also contact Apostle Chris Gaba on Facebook, YouTube, or www. Certain Point Ministries International.com. Also get interactive with Apostle Chris Gaba on all social media handles by typing Chris Gaba or 0241 282 832 on WhatsApp. You can also email at chrisgaba50 at yahoo.com. We are located at Ablekuma, Joma Jerusalem Park, near the old block factory or MTN pool. You can also join any of our services at Rehoboth Cathedral, Joma Jerusalem Park, Ablekuma. The executive service on Sunday, 8.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Wednesday teaching service, 6.30 p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. Friday deliverance service, 7 o'clock p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Come and see the salvation of the Lord. Your mighty is known.